no matter what I think of this movie, that is one lazy ass title, isn't it? So, The Suicide Squad. It's a new movie written and directed by James Gunn, starring heaps of names. I don't know, Margot Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, Idris Elba, uh, Viola Davis, heaps that I'm forgetting, John Cena. Oh, of course I forget him. I, I couldn't bloody see him the whole time. Okay, that was bad. <laughs> but uh, what, what the storyline is, well, it's a suicide squad. They've got a difficult mission. They've got to go into some made-up fictional DC country. Because it can never be a real fic real country. I nearly said real fictional country. It can never be a real country. It always has to be some kind of made-up uh, South American country or a made-up uh, Middle Eastern country or something like that. But this time it's a made-up. South American kind of country, I guess. And they've got this base there called Jotunheim that has some kind of technology and they've got to go in and uh, kind of destroy it. i to say, I probably wasn't excited as excited as some people were. I liked Guardians. Hated Guardians too. I think I saw one trailer for this. I was like, eh. And that was about it until I sat down to watch this and... Boy, oh boy, I had a smile on my face almost the entire time. There is something to be said with superhero things that have Z-list uh, characters in it. Because you can do more with those characters. You can take risks more often with these characters and things like that. This movie played my expectations a little bit in a good way. This movie, I, don't, I didn't expect it to take risks to pump me up and excite me and make me laugh as consistently as it did make me go wow that's really clever i'm not telling you too much because i want you to watch this movie <clears throat> it's better than the first movie i think in almost every way uh, characters seem a bit more well defined and well written uh the acting is fine it was fine the first one the acting is really good in this one too the pacing's just wonderful. There's always something going on. It never lingers on one scene for too long. It's always moving at a steady clip. It was two hours and ten minutes. This is one of the rare movies that I didn't want to end. Yeah, I would have been happy with another hour or something like that of this. And because of that, yeah, I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah, it's really, really good. Check it out. You don't even need to have watched Suicide Squad to watch this. Now, what are you saying? Wait, that review's really short. All right, so now I'm going to tear this up. I don't want to talk spoilers. So, you know the score. You know you should see it. You don't need to see any other movie to understand this. You know all that. All right. Ah. Uh. Oh, and give me a like, dislike, share, and subscribe. As for the movie itself, I really, it really benefited for not having too many major popular characters. Uh, meaning characters that most people in the mainstream would know, or anything like that. The only major character is Harley Quinn. So you pretty much know she's going to live. She's very popular. She's a very popular character. So th there's no way they were going to kill her off, but there's definitely some surprises with who lives, who dies. I'm not even going to say that in this little spoiler section. But it's really well done. Uh, I find it funny. In superhero comics, there is a thing where some characters have the same powers. Some of them even have similar backstories. And it's not always just there's a Marvel version and a DC version. Sometimes they're in the same universe. So the fact that Peacemaker and Bloodsport kind of had similar backstories and uh, powers, that made me freaking fucking chuckle. They haven't done that in movies or TV shows that often, I don't think. It was really cool. I, my only niggle, I think, was Peter Capaldi was a little bit underutilized. Uh, he's got all these things that make him super smart, but he never really does anything super smart. That's maybe my one little gripe. However, I just want to... In case it wasn't in the trailer, I didn't watch the trailers for this movie, by the way. Or if it did, I can't remember them. But I will say, uh, this movie has one of my favourite DC villains in it, in Starro the Conqueror. Starro! And he's done so well! 
he's kind of terrifying but goofy at the same time yeah it's a giant star that does starfish but and then they cover your face and they take you over oh i loved it it looked so cool and i was just like oh i hope they kind of don't make him lame and they didn't starro the conqueror was one of my favorite things about this this movie and that's the problem i've had with a lot of superhero movies yes you can get the protagonist down per perfectly or reasonably well enough we never really have real cool or interesting villains all right starro is fucking cool he's this giant star that shoots the little stars to cover your face and take you over and he just grows in power. He's this giant star knocking over this this small island town. Oh, isn't it? Are they on an island? I don't know. But <clears throat> I loved it. I liked I liked all the characters we've got that that are introduced in this movie, especially Bloodsport. Ratcatcher was alright. I didn't mind her. Uh, Sliced Alone as the Shark was amazing. And I liked John Cena as Peacemaker. So all the new characters kind of gel in really well. It's fast paced, it's awesome. And there is an after credit sequence, which some people may or may not have known about because of upcoming schedules that these things have. But I didn't know that, so it was a surprise to me. So, hmm. Yeah. The Suicide Squad. Kind of loved it. This is one of those rare superhero movies. That I won't be, you know, that I'll rewatch. I don't rewatch too many of these. This is be, this would be one that uh, I'd put on to show other people because it's fun, it's gory, and action packed, and great characters. That's all you need, really. <laughs>